Well, hey everybody, Mr. Delcourt here, uh, welcoming you to Main Fish and Wildlife class for the fall of 2020. Um, gonna be certainly an interesting year, no matter how we look at it. If you have uh, opened up this video and begun watching it, that means you've uh, got our class in Google Classroom, which is step number one, and you've located today's activity. Kind of a crazy way to start the year with you guys, uh, the fact that we haven't met in person or on Zoom yet, um, but on this asynchronous Wednesday. So um, I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, and today we're really just gonna take a few minutes to get ourselves uh, acquainted with the layout of the class, how everything's gonna work uh, in, our, in our plan for the year and just kind of get excited to jump back in tomorrow uh, in person or remotely depending on uh, where you fall in the alphabet and we'll get going uh, first thing tomorrow. So let's jump right in here. Um, again, welcome to Maine Fish and Wildlife class. And I have posted our, our course syllabus on Google Classroom for you guys to reference as well, but it, it's worth right off the bat just covering some of the nuts and bolts of the class and going over uh, you know, how you'll be graded and, and the, the topics that we're gonna cover this year in class. Uh, essentially, my goal for you guys in Maine Fish and Wildlife, as always, no matter, no matter the circumstances, is to really change the way you guys look at wildlife. I would love us to view wildlife from a more uh, scientific uh, perspective, and we'll, and we'll get more into that uh, later this week as we take notes and talk about uh, just what is wildlife and how we value these organisms. But um, yeah, the, the, the big broad picture here is I'm hoping to change the way you look at wildlife, and, and that can happen in a variety of ways, and I'm excited for that. Uh, and I'm really pumped up to have you guys in class this year and get going on a topic that I am just so passionate about. Uh, this class I created uh, my second year at TA, so this must be the seventh year I've taught Maine Fish and Wildlife, um, and it's become uh, you know something I'm super, super passionate about and really happy to have you guys along for the ride. Um, let's talk real briefly about how your grade will be calculated in here, uh, and this is again is all found in the syllabus that's posted to Google Classroom, but. Um, Really, uh, the, the vast majority of your grade, a big chunk of your overall grade in this class will come from your participation in class and remotely this year. That's 45% of your grade, almost half. So on the days you're remote, we'll talk about more later, but you'll have a very brief um, uh, type of assignment to do. And then uh, we may have quizzes and the various labs and maybe a written assignment here or there. Those will fall under those labs and quizzes grades at another 45%. And then we'll have unit tests at the end of every unit, which come in at just about 10% of your grade, but I think they're important to help us kind of recap and, and um, consolidate our thoughts on, on a given unit, okay? So uh, pretty basic layout of the grades. It really puts um, the responsibility in your hands to invest and participate in class, participate in that remote side of your work, and you're almost guaranteed to succeed in this class. I, I tell kids all the time, if you really invest and come to my class and put forth um, you know, the effort, the, the basic effort that we expect of you, uh, I don't think you can help but learn and you can't help but succeed either. So um, uh, just keep that in mind going forward. So uh, if we want to talk about the topics we're going to cover here this year, this is the second page of our syllabus in Google Classroom, but we're going to jump right into Unit 1 talking about wildlife management from a very broad perspective. What is wildlife? How are they valuable to us? Um, what are the various philosophies we use in managing wildlife? And how do we specifically do that here in Maine uh, using the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife? We'll talk about them over and over again over the course of the semester. Uh, at some point, we'll reach Unit 2. Who knows when uh, this year uh, we're taking everything day by day and uh, it's going to have to go a little bit slower in the beginning, but I'm hoping to pick up the pace as we become more acquainted uh, with each other and with the how this is all going to work as the year goes on. But at some point we'll reach Unit 2 and we'll start talking mammals. Um, these are the big uh, cuddly furry guys that everybody loves. And we'll talk about um, uh, how we identify and group the species of mammals in Maine. We'll talk about who's related to who, how they all kind of uh, are related. And then we'll talk about um, Maine's three big game species, big game mammals, uh, black bears, deer, and moose. Uh, and we'll talk about management strategies for each and a lot about reproductive adaptations of these creatures. Uh, at some point, I'm thinking we'll get to our third unit on fish and we'll think of Maine's game fish, both cold and warm water. We'll break them out into two groups. We'll talk a lot about fish identification um, and then how we manage various species of fish and some of the threats to our fish here in Maine. We have some unique species that are under some uh, somewhat unique threats. And then um, hopefully wrapping up the semester there in January with some winter ecology where we can start to think about 
The adaptations required of these species in Maine to survive our harsh winters, pretty amazing, amazing creatures. Uh, and then uh, hopefully we'll get a little bit of snow there in January. We'll be able to get out into the TA forest and um, follow some tracks around and talk about winter tracking, which is always a really fun time towards the end of the class in January. So big plans, hoping to get through all that. We'll see how it goes. We're going to take it day by day and do our absolute best and uh, see where we end up. Real brief, briefly should get you acquainted with uh, myself, Mr. Delacourt. Um, as I said, I started this class seven years ago here at TA, but I am a lifelong uh, outdoor uh, and wildlife science enthusiast. I have been crawling around the Maine woods since I can remember, um, and I'm a huge outdoorsman. I love hunting and fishing and bird watching and hiking, and if it involves the Maine outdoors, it is uh, on my list of favorite things to do, uh, canoeing uh, and, and all these things. If it gets me outside, then, then it is uh, one of my true passions, and, and I live my life um, constantly thinking about that next uh, main adventure out there in the woods and uh, I'm anxious to share a lot of my experiences in the main woods with you guys as we go through our lessons um, but by no means do you need to be an outdoors person to enjoy this class um, and I've had plenty of students with almost no experience in the outdoors or even uh, with feelings averse to hunting or fishing that have really enjoyed this class this is about wildlife science and it is uh, not necessarily about human consumption of wildlife or any of those things. Although those uh, certainly, the management of wildlife is certainly a theme of the course as we go along. So um, stick with me. I really hope my passion for the subject will be contagious to you. Uh, if you already share some of this passion, then that's even better. And I'm really anxious to have you share your experiences in the Maine woods with us as well. Um, so uh, I spend my summers, or in the past, prior to having children a few years ago, I spent my summers for a long time working as a registered Maine guide. I'm also a captain, so I used to run a whale watch boat for, for about 10 summers and then switched over to guiding uh, deep sea fishing adventures as well as freshwater fishing adventures as a registered Maine guide. And uh, I also act as the Thornton Academy Angler Society advisor. That's uh, the club that I started at TA when I got here in 2013. Uh, and uh, it's become uh, really a huge part of my life and, and a very successful club at the school. And anybody I suggest with any passion for the outdoors in general, if you like getting out in canoes and fishing and just uh, exploring the state, it's a great student group um, to join and check out. There's no pressure to come to meetings or anything, and, and we're not even sure how that's all going to look this year. Uh, but we're going to do our best to, to make sure um, that we get a chance to maybe get out there into the, the woods and waters of Maine a little bit with the club. We'll see how that all works out. Uh, so that's just a little bit about myself. I studied wildlife ecology at the University of Maine for a couple years before transferring uh, to major in uh, education to become a science teacher. But, uh, you know, had originally as a youngster planned on becoming a wildlife biologist, and it is just, just a true lifelong passion of mine. And really being able to teach wildlife science uh, is really the best of both worlds for me. I get to stay in the field studying this stuff and staying up to date on all these things that are going on, but also share my passion for it with other people, which is uh, what drew me to teaching. So um, I really hope, uh, again, that my passion for this stuff is contagious to you this semester and that you enjoy taking the class as much as I enjoy teaching it. So thanks for hearing me out there. Let's talk about what you're going to need to succeed this year in Maine Fish and Wildlife. Um, obviously, the iPad is a critical tool for us. Everything in this class prior um, to this new uh, world of, of uh, remote learning, in my class, everything was on the iPad already, so it hasn't been a huge shift for me. We are a uh, fully paperless class. Having your iPad uh, fully charged and ready to go is a really important uh, thing to succeed in Maine Fish and Wildlife. On your iPad, there's a handful of apps you're going to need. Number one, Google Classroom. This class is hosted there. If you're watching this video, it means you've already got it, and my class popped up for you, which means we're one step towards success here. Um, we're going to use Notability to take notes in here and work on assignments. I find it to be a pretty intuitive, easy-to-use app. I like to take the assignments out of Google Classroom, put them in Notability to work on, and then resubmit them to Google Classroom. It's a few extra steps, 
But man, does it save uh, some headaches in the long run because uh, Notability saves everything as you do it. You really can't lose it. If you move an assignment to Notability, you can keep working on it away from wireless out in the TA forest, which is really important. There's a lot of benefits um, to using Notability in this class, and that's the expectation that I'll hold you guys to going forward. So you need Notability on your iPad if you don't already have it. It should have come on your iPad, and if it didn't, you can get it for free out of the self-service app uh, on your iPad. Pages is another one that should have come on your iPad. Again, if you don't have it, you're gonna wanna get that out of self-service. Make sure you go to self-service to do that because Pages uh, is a paid app in the App Store, but under self-service, you can re-download that for free. And then the other app we're gonna use this year outside quite a bit, I think, if my plans go accordingly, uh, is iNaturalist. So if you don't have that on your iPad, you wanna get that uh, at some point before our first meeting as well. Uh, so those are kind of like the four apps that I see us really needing this year to succeed. There may be other stuff that pops up, but for now, if you've got those four, uh, YouTube would be helpful too, but I got a feeling you've all got that on your iPads. I know you guys like to watch a YouTube vid. So um, yeah, so those four apps would be pretty important to have on your iPad ready to go to learn both remotely and in person in our hybrid model this year. Um, so let's talk more about that hybrid uh, course layout, like how this is all gonna work, uh, how I envision Maine Fish and Wildlife working. Um, just know uh, your attendance is expected every day in class, whether you are re whether you're remote that day or whether you are an in-person student that day. And again, that all goes back to the letter of the alphabet and uh, what day it is, uh, maroon or gold. Um, but attendance, I'm going to take at the beginning of the block. You are expected to either be in Zoom uh, remotely or here in person, and that is how attendance will be done. Now, here's where Maine Fish and Wildlife is going to get a little different than other classes. Okay, so. Other classes that are gonna be fully synchronous, meaning kids at home are gonna be on Zoom, all the kids in class are gonna be in person, but class will be run the same for everyone. I've gotten um, the go-ahead from administration to kind of flip my classroom this year to allow us to spend more time outside. I think that's really important, A, considering um, the, you know, the world of COVID-19, I think being outside is a pretty nice, safe place to be in general and uh, the government has encouraged people to be outside since the very beginning of all this. And B, um, I think it's a really neat opportunity to apply what we've learned in class outside in person. And I think those real world learning experiences are super valuable. So here's how this will work. Beginning of class, I'm gonna take attendance with everybody on Zoom and in person. Most days that you are here in person, we will be going outside that day. I say most days. There may be days that we stay inside to work on an assignment uh, that, that I really think you should have me in person to help you with. Um, but most days we will be going outside. That means you want to be prepared with correct footwear, maybe a coat, maybe a rain jacket if it's supposed to rain. We're going to be planning on going outside most days for the entire semester and it will get cold. I honestly don't mind if people keep a set of boots in my room that just live here so you always have the right footwear or have a coat that you leave in the room somewhere. We can set something up if people want to do that. Um, I don't mind doing that at all. So just be prepared every day that you're in person, be prepared to spend the block outside. If, if it's your remote day, um, let's say you're, you're one of the Zoomers at home, I'm gonna check in with you. I'm usually gonna have the notes that we would have done in class. That'll be your assignment for the day that you're at home on Zoom. It'll be a you know 15 to 20 minute uh, Zoom notes video. You're gonna take your notes, and then the next class, I will check your notes to make sure you've done your homework, uh, and we'll move on from there. It'll be a quick little simple homework assignment to just take the notes based on the video. And we'll talk more about that um, when we get together in class uh, tomorrow, if you're a Maroon Day student. Um, Fully remote students, if any of you are out there thinking, well, gosh, how do I fit in here? I'm a, I'm a fully remote kid. I'm not, I'm, I, I won't have any in-person days. If you are a fully remote student, uh, it's really important that you reach out to me as soon as possible so I can get you uh, on my list because my goal this semester is to create a comparable experience for you. So you may miss a day. Uh, you, you may miss our walks in the woods where we're, where we're applying these concepts, but I'm hoping to film a series of videos just for you guys uh, that'll allow you to have a comparable experience, and it's important that I have you on my list so that you're able to access those materials. Uh, so that's really, really important. Um, and then finally, Wednesdays, as you know, each Wednesday is going to be asynchronous for everyone, meaning you don't have to actually check in to a class, but you'll probably have work to do uh, depending on whether it's a maroon or a, or a gold day. Now, for our class, 
it kind of works out because there's one or two per month depending on what color day you have and about once a month in my class previously we would do assignments called reading and reflection it's where we read from my absolute favorite book of all time it's a beautiful book about wildlife and wildlife management we'll talk more about uh, as we get going uh, but it's a br well, you'll read a brief little story and write me a little reflection on it that'll most likely be your wednesday assignment and i may mix it up every now and then on you but uh, with a podcast or something but um, yeah it'll be a brief little quick assignment on a wednesday if it correlates to your class so um, again this video is just meant to get you briefly acquainted with myself and the class and the way everything's going to work if you've accessed it and are watching it today again you are already taking a giant step toward, toward success and i can't thank you enough for that I look forward to meeting everybody uh, at some point and clearing up any questions. If you have any questions, I encourage you to write something down real quick and um, so, you, so you don't forget. And uh, as always, uh, I'm here working for you. It's really, really important that if you have a question, if you need extra help, if you need anything from me, you let me know because I will make it happen. I take my job very seriously and I really, really want to make sure that your experience in here is as rewarding as possible and that you really get out of it what I hope that all students can. So um, please never hesitate with a question or a concern or anything. And uh, I'm here to absolutely do my best to make sure uh, you learn as much as possible. So I thank you guys a ton for tuning in today. I look forward to meeting everybody in my Maroon class tomorrow, uh, whether it be Zoom or uh, in person, and we'll get right to it. So thanks again, guys, and uh, we'll see you all soon.